Good morning, family. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Bible Nuggets, wherever you are on this wonderful planet that God has made for you. I just want you to know, as always, that God has a wonderful plan for your life, and we are finding out about that plan as we walk with God, as we walk with Him in His Word, as we pray together, and, and during the day, as we do the various disciplines, we get closer to God and God's will for your life will be revealed. And we're just so glad to be here today. Um, we kind of um, lost the rhythm a, a, a little bit last week. Um, we, we just had a lot going on. Uh, and we apologize to, to you that we had a nuggetless week last week and it was um, uh, full of uh, wailing and gnashing of teeth. Uh, <laughs> and as much as we didn't have our Bible nuggets and and we apologize to you. We, we started a new rhythm with our, um, our camp called Reach Academy. And we have a two month long camp from, uh, it, it lasts from seven to six uh, with the kids and it kind of threw us off rhythm. Uh, we don't have a, um, a huge production team. You're looking at the production <laughs> team pretty much um, as far as some things are concerned. Um, we do have some outside help but um, Sonia does a lot of the prep work and when she gets buried under, uh, it's just nothing that we can do. Everything stops and grinds to a halt. So we apologize, we're trying to do some things differently so that we don't have these interruptions um, um, often, but I pray for your forgiveness and we're glad that you were able to return with us today as we are continuing in the book of Genesis. We're in Genesis chapter 13 and we were discussing um, the separation of Adam and Lot. Abram. Oh, that's it. Adam, I'm sorry. Abram and Lot. Um, they, they were both so rich uh, and had so much that they began to have some internal strife with the herdsmen of Abram and the herdsmen of Lot. And they began to fight with one another because the land was not large enough to, no land was large enough to keep um, both of them together. And they began to have conflicts and to, so to create a win-win for both of them, um, it needed, a separation needed to happen. Mm. And sometime in life, um, separations need to happen mm -hmm. in order to maintain um, um, friendships and various things and uh, uh, so that both parties can have what they need and um, sometimes uh, a separation is needed. We see it many times in, in the Bible, even in the New Testament, Paul, uh, um, Saul, and Barnabas mm -hmm. um, had to separate um, at some point in their um, in their journey together over a dispute over John Mark and whether he was about to continue with them in the ministry and um, and it's just the way things go the only the, really the only person that you can't separate from is your spouse hmm. um, because you are plight trothed to them <laughs> uh, you are um, you are in contract uh, uh, to death do you part contract uh, with your spouse and so separation um, parting from them is not on the table you have to make that thing work together hmm. but um, any other relationship um, um, sometimes that is an option that is on the table and it's a necessarily necessary one and sometimes and this in this case it, it, it just was and uh, so we're in Genesis chapter 13 and then let's uh, uh, take a look at verse 10. Okay. Lot looked around and saw that the whole plain of the Jordan toward Zor was well watered like the garden of the Lord like the land of Egypt. This was before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. So Lot chose for himself the whole plain of the Jordan and set out toward the east. Okay, so so he saw this beautiful plain. It was like the Garden of Eden. <clears throat> um, it was like um, um, Egypt as you go towards Zoar. And um, apparently they were, um, obviously Moses 
and his audience, the children of Israel, just, just left Egypt hmm. not long ago. So this was something that was very common to them as a reference. And so it was just beautiful. Okay, verse 12. And by the way, sometimes when you give people a choice, hmm. they'll choose the best for themselves. Mm -hmm. They'll oftentimes choose the best for themselves, but that's okay because God will still work it out for you. And it was obviously the best um, land for um, his um, livestock and, and just as far as quality of life. It was, a, it was more urban. Hmm. Um, it was, um, but it was, uh, it was well watered. Mm -hmm. It was um, densely um, um, grassy, uh, so that his livestock could eat. But he also can have the arts mm -hmm. and and a real uh, uh, urban, all the accoutrements mm -hmm. of, of urban life as well in so Sodom and in Gomorrah. Okay, mm -hmm. which were um, fairly large cities for that day. Go ahead. Genesis thirteen twelve. Mm -hmm. Abram lived in the land of Canaan, while Lot lived among the cities of the plain and pitched his tents near Sodom. Now the people of Sodom were wicked and were sinning greatly against the Lord. All right, so he chose a beautiful spot, mm -hmm. an urban spot. He, he is amongst the cities, so, so it was multi-cities. If you could think of like, like Northern California, mm -hmm. that, that's kind of how it was. They, they had the Napa Valley, but you have um, uh, close by, you have San Francisco and Oakland and, and all these um, um, beautiful places that surround it. And, um, and he picked a spot in the suburbs of Sodom, mm -hmm. okay? He was living large um, um, in, in, in like a suburb of San Francisco and they were wicked. Hmm. Um, like San Francisco, and um, if you're from San Francisco, hey, it was like any big, big city um, in America today. They were exceedingly wicked and sinful against the Lord. Hmm. Okay, uh, and the the very um, aspect of of sodomy comes from the word from the city of Sodom, hmm. which is um, which deals, which is how it's described man on man sex mm. okay and so uh, that's how the lord viewed that activity mm -hmm. okay go ahead the lord said to abram after lot had parted from him look around from where you are to the north and to the south to the east and west all the land that you see i will give to you and your offspring forever okay it, it, it's a funny thing. Hmm. Lot chose um, based on the facts, based on uh, all the best data um, that he could and chose the best for himself. But God was with Abram. Hmm. And he says, hey, look at all, all this other land. He didn't do this to, to Lot. Mm -hmm. Because not only wasn't he giving this to Lot's descendants, mm -hmm. this land would actually be destroyed. Mm -hmm. And in part, because Lot was living there. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so, so Lot chose a temporal, okay, but beautiful spot, mm -hmm. okay. But Abram chose a permanent, um, eternal uh, spot because God says, hey, not only am I going to let you graze here, I'm going to give this land, all that you see, hmm. to your descendants. Hmm. Okay? I will make your offspring like the dust of the earth so that if anyone could count the dust, then your offspring could be counted. Okay, so if you got a way of calculating <laughs> dust, you have a way of calculating wow. your offspring. So at, uh, God is rearticulating his promises. And, and every now and then when we reach these key pivotal points in life, and this was a key pivotal point, mm -hmm. um, it, was, it was no minor thing, his separation uh, uh, with Lot. Okay, mm -hmm. Lot was um, Lot was his, was his road dog. Mm -hmm. You know, what I mean, he they they've been through everything together mm -hmm. um, for many many years. So this was not a big thing. I'm sure it was depressing mm -hmm. uh, uh, for for Abram uh, uh, to leave Lot, and it was depressing for Lot as well. Mm -hmm. And and uh, but God lifted up 
of Abraham's head um, with with the rearticulation of the promise. Mm -hmm. And God will of, often do this with us as well and just um, encourage us to keep going, keep moving. Um, his, his wonderful plan for our lives is still in effect, even though it may not be as we envisioned Mm -hmm. Because we envision certain people being with us mm -hmm. as we come into whatever God has for us. Mm -hmm. But oftentimes, those that start off with us do not end up with us. Mm -hmm. And we have some partings on the way. But God says you're still in the plan. Mm -hmm. Okay. And by the way, there are many people who, who wonder if Abraham was partially... Um, disobedient to God when he says to um, leave your family mm -hmm. that Lot still went with him mm -hmm. but because he was his basically his heir mm -hmm. his he was um, his ward um, um, he didn't think that separating with Lot from Lot was a violation or, or disobedience and God never um, God also never objected mm -hmm. but he did work things out so that eventually Abraham would totally be isolated from his family. Wow. Mm -hmm. Verse 17. Mm -hmm. Go walk through the length and breadth of the land, for I am giving it to you. So Abram went to live near the great trees of Morim. Of Mamre. Mamre. So Abram went to live near the great trees of Mamre at Hebron, where he pitched his tent. Then he built an altar to the Lord. Okay, once again, we yeah. see that we see the pattern. Revelation, mm. okay, the confirmation, then that's that sparks worship. Worship is that is that righteous response to, to God revealing himself to you in a special way. Okay. Wow. Go ahead. Genesis chapter 14. At the time when Elm Oh, let's, let's, let's skip this part, honey. I, I, we, this is going to be way too thick, yeah. okay, to, uh, with all the names. Let me just break it down. Uh, chapter 14, there are nine cities, mm -hmm. okay, and nine kings over these cities, mm -hmm. okay, and five of them joined together uh, in an alliance to fight against the four other kings um, in this region, okay? So there's this war um, that involves five city-states, uh -huh. okay? And five against four um, um, were, were at war, and, and they were battling in the area where Lot moved to, okay? okay? So the battle was occurring around Sodom and Gomorrah, okay? Mm -hmm. And he gets caught up in this thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, um, let's start in, uh, uh, in verse 10. Okay. Now the valley of Sidon was full of tar pits, and when the kings of Sodom and Gomorrah fled, some of the men fell into them, and the rest fled to the hills. Okay, by the way, Sodom and Gomorrah, okay, and their kings, okay, over the king of Sodom, King Gomorrah, was one of the nine kings in this squabble, okay, okay in this war. Okay, okay, go ahead. The four kings seized all the goods of Sodom and Gomorrah and all their food. Then they went away. Okay, so, so the four kings overcame the five kings, which included the king of Sodom and Gomorrah. Okay, okay, go ahead. Okay. They also carried off Abram's nephew Lot and his possessions since he was living in Sodom. Okay, in case you don't know anything about warfare, um, uh, one of the uh, things that happen when there's a war is uh, uh, once you defeat your enemy, okay, you get to spoil their cities and take anything that you want. Winning a battle is not just a battle for, um, you know, to see who wins and who's the strongest. Mm -hmm. The loser actually loses more than just a battle. Mm -hmm. They lose, um, they have the, uh, the uh, potential. potential, that's a good word, the potential of losing everything, every bit of wealth 
hmm. that they have. And their freedom. Okay, it, their freedom. That's right. They can they can take the other person into slavery, the other cities into slavery, and that's one of the great things about being a warrior. Hmm. Um, is you so you say why do men go to war and risk their lives? One of the great things about being a warrior is is you get to personally um, um, partake mm -hmm. in the plundering um, of of victory. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so uh, the the men, the foot soldiers, they go in and, and rob rob everybody. They take the um, uh, uh, the most beautiful women for themselves. Um, um, they take um, strong men and, and boys and, and children as slaves. Mm -hmm. um, um, they, they sometimes kill many of them. Um, and, and they also take the goods, the, the wealth from them, and they divide it amongst themselves, and they, they um, give the generals uh, their share and the officers their share, and they take a share. Mm -hmm. And um, to the victors go the spoils. Mm -hmm. And this is what was happening, and Lot and his family was part of their spoils, and they were very rich. Mm -hmm. So they took Lot and all of his flocks, mm -hmm. all of his servants, um, uh, uh, his whole family, they took them away to their city. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, verse uh, 13. A man who had escaped came and reported to Abram, the Hebrew, now Abram was living near the great trees of Mamre, the Amorite, a brother of Eshcol, and okay, so so Abram, he was again, it, as we remember, he was kind of wandering around. He mm -hmm. was this nomadic, had this nomadic lifestyle, and he was living under this terebinth tree, under the terebinth tree of Mamre. Mm -hmm. um, Mamre was a person. Okay, he was an Amorite. His brother's name was Esco. Okay. Okay, and he also had another br uh, brother named Anner. Okay, and they were allies with Abram. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in other words, they had each other's back because it was dangerous. It was always danger. You didn't know it could be it could be a king, mm -hmm. you know, of a city that might want what you have, mm -hmm. and they'll send some soldiers over there to um, take what you have mm -hmm. if you're not strong. And um, but to um, to be strong, you can form alliances with other strong men. Okay, and these three brothers, okay, had an alliance with with Abram, who was also a strong man. Say, hey, if anything goes down, um, um, we're in this thing together with each other. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so these were Abram's boys, and he was dwelling on their land. Uh, they got along good. Uh, uh, Abram, I'm sure, kicked them out something, kind of a lease situation, um, um, which was very profitable for them. Mm -hmm. And they helped him out if he ever needed it. Just mm -hmm. ring the alarm and we'll be there. Mm -hmm. okay? okay, verse 14. When oh, oh, By the way, let, let me just explain this as well. Uh, one, of, um, one of Lot's men okay, got away. Okay, okay. Yeah. he escaped mm -hmm. and he ran to Abram. Mm -hmm. Okay, he says, "Hey, they they got your they got your son, they got your brother. Mm -hmm. um, they have your nephew, uh, and and they uh, they sacked Sodom and Gomorrah and all these other places, and they've taken. He's alive, but they've taken him captive. Mm -hmm. Okay, verse okay. fourteen. When Abram heard that his relative had been taken captive. He called out the 318 trained men born in his household and went to pursue as far as Dan. Okay, so he got his squad um, his, his, that was trained in his house um, that were loyal to him, and they went after these dudes, okay? Um, and and the, uh, uh, it's not mentioned here, but it was, um, it was more than likely that uh, these three brothers sent men to. Mm -hmm. Okay, it doesn't mention it here, but because they were mentioned, their alliance was mentioned earlier, it, it may stand to reason that they, um, uh, they went with them. And we have some more evidence a little later on that that was the case. Mm -hmm. okay, okay, go ahead. During the night, Abram divided his men to attack them, and he routed them, pursuing them as far as Hobah, 
north of Damascus. Okay, so so his force was tougher than these armies. He snuck up on them um, and um, caught them by surprise, um, overcame them, and um, and beat them for miles. <laughs> okay, um, and and uh, verse sixteen. This is the result. He recovered all the goods and brought back his relative Lot and his possessions, together with the women and the other people. Okay, so so this was a guy was with him. Uh, he had an astounding victory, and now he was even richer hmm. because now he could spoil the spoilers. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, uh, go go ahead, mm -hmm. verse seventeen. After Abram returned from defeating. How do you say that? Uh, Kedor Lomer? Kedor uh, Lomer? Okay, yeah, one of the kings. Okay. okay. And the kings allied with him. No. The king of Sodom came out to meet him in the valley of Shavia. Okay, so um, uh, after this victory, uh, uh, the, the other kings came out to meet Abram to okay. congratulate him and to, um, and they were captive too. Okay. You see, he rescued them as well. Okay. okay. Uh, uh, so, um, so they came out to. Um, um, they said, "Your says they came out. They went out to meet him at the valley of, of Shava, mm -hmm. uh, which me, which is the king's valley." Mm. Okay, and um, and and the other kings who were with him. So the other five kings. Okay. Okay, and um, and then we have this mysterious. Uh, character who who really has relevance to us comes out as well, and that's what we'll begin with on next time. Because I guess we're out of time now. Time really flies when you when you're having fun, and this is this is thick. And um, hey, our God is called the Lord of Hosts. Hmm. Okay, He's not just a God of peace. But he's our God in the midst of war because life is not just peace. Hmm. Okay, there are evil people in this world and they do evil. And our God is strong and mighty. He's the Lord mighty in battle. He's hmm. the king of glory. Hmm. And, and, and he is the Lord of hosts, um, mighty in battle. So when we have our battles in life, God is there. And so, uh, uh, and, and, he, and he doesn't mind the fight. Hmm. Okay, and he'll fight right with us. Okay, so remember, God has a wonderful plan for your life. Walk with him, get into his plan, and we'll see you on next time. Sam, why don't you close us out in prayer real quick. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you in Jesus' precious and holy name, Lord God, and we are so grateful, Lord, that you fight our battles for us, yes. Lord God. We pray that we will call on you, Lord God, and you will answer. In Jesus' name, we thank you and praise you, Lord. Amen. 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 God bless you, and we'll see you tomorrow. God bless you, family.